Okay, this is going to be the line and curve of uh, best fit and the uh, direct variation versus and inverse variation uh, review. Uh, if you do well, do this and practice this, you'll do well on the test. Okay, uh, question number one, the braking distance for cars. I'm not going to read it to you. Okay, all right, this basically is going to be your X. Okay, this is going to be your Y. Okay, and we're not responding. Off to a great start. Okay, X, there we go. And Y. All right, so what we're going to do, all right, we got to come up with the equation, and then we got to figure out uh, the, the total uh, stopping distance when the tra car's traveling 65 miles an hour. So I'm going to go to menu, I'm going to go to stat, I'm going to input these values 5, 10, uh, 20, 30, all right, 40. 50, all right, and put the uh, Y amounts next to it, 10, 40, 80, 120, 160, 200. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to take a look, what is this? All right, so as I can see, this is a line, okay? All right, so I'm going to calc, I'm going to do X, all right, so my equation is Y equals 4.13, minus 5.12, okay? So I got um, y equals 4.13x minus 5.20, okay? All right, so what I'm going to do to figure out this, I'm gonna go in and graph it, menu. I'm gonna go in and graph, all right? I'm gonna do 4.13x minus 5.20, I'm gonna draw. Now, I'm probably going to have to zoom out a couple of times, always to be sure one, let's see, uh, two, and uh, that's probably going to be good enough, but I want to zoom out just in case. All right, so this, the traveling distance of the car is 65. So what you have to look at is what is 65 miles an hour? Okay, that's X. So if I have X, then what I have to find is Y. If you find Y, if you have Y, you have to find X, okay? So if I want to find Y, because that's my, this what my blank is, I'm going to G-solve, Y calculate, and in my example here, they're telling me X is 65, so I know that's right, all right? So it's telling me it's 263.25, okay? And hopefully that will write. There we go. Okay, great. All right, going on to the next question. Object thrown off the top of the building. The table below shows the height. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into uh, menu. I'm going to go back to stat. I'm going to type in these values. One, two, three, four, and five. I'm going to delete this value and delete this value. Okay, 120, 135, uh, 165, uh, 127 and 114. Okay, and now I'm going to graph, graph one. As you can see, it sort of curves like that. So that's going to be calculated. I'm going to now pick the x squared, and I get that negative 8.85x squared. Okay, so I got y equals negative 8. Point, let, me, let me erase that real quick. Okay, move all in here. Y equals 8. Point, uh, I think that's negative, actually. I'm sorry. Negative 8.85x squared. Okay, let's see what these other ones are. 51.14x. And that last one is 76.2. Okay? So there's my equation. Once again, this is going to be x. This is going to be y. So it says, when will the ball be two feet above the ground? So that's going to be, feet is going to be y, so I'm going to calculate x. Okay, so I'm going into menu, I'm going to go into graph, I'm typing in uh, my equation, okay, which is negative um, 8.85x squared, all right, plus 51.4x, uh, plus 76.2. All right, I'm drawing that. I'm going to zoom out a couple times. One, two, and three. All right, so I've got Y. I'm calculating X. So I'm going to G-solve X-calc. I'm putting in two. 
And all right, now, when will it be uh, two feet above the ground? Well, that's negative time. The other one would be 7.0, okay? 7.0, that makes the most sense. We can never have negative time there, okay? Going on to the next page. All right, number three, once again, this is going to be x, this is going to be y, okay? Assuming a linear relationship, okay? So they're basically telling us it's going to be a line, okay? Um, predict the time that the next eruption will happen in five minutes. Okay, so five minutes. What's minutes? Minutes is, is y. So what I have to find is I have to find x, all right? So I'm going to go in, once again, I'm going to go in and, and go into menu and go into stat and type this stuff in. 4, 4.2, 3 3.8, 3.6, 3, 2.8, 4.5. Okay, that's going to be 70, 76. 68, 63, 58, 55, 88, okay? Uh, graph, all right, okay? This is gonna, it, now, it sort of looks like the inverse, but since they tell us linear, we're gonna have to assume that that's a line, okay? Actually, the inverse won't go this way, but that's gonna be a line, all right? So I got y equals 17.30 and 4.25. All right, so uh, I'm just going to write this down for me, 17.30x um, and uh, 4.25. Now, my answer, though, is going to be I have to find the x there, all right? So I'm just writing down that equation to help me. So I'm going to go back into graph, type in that equation, 17.30x right, plus 4.25. All right, I'm going to draw. Once again, I'm zooming out a couple of times, one. Uh, two, and let's do one more, so hopefully that will be enough. Okay, so it says, all right, find, um, I've got y, so i got to find x. All right, g solve, I'm going to find x. My y is 5, and let's see if that, if i got enough. Yep, um, it's going to be 0 0.04 uh, uh, seconds. Okay, uh, actually that's not right. Hold on. No, wait, wait, I'm sorry. I did this backwards. Okay. Hold on. That's right with X and Y. Okay. But that five minutes, whoops, did that one backwards. That five minutes is referring to X. I'm sorry. So I got to find Y. All right. So I'm going to, uh, G solve, I'm going to find Y. All right. And that's 90.75. So that's what I want. Okay. The reason why I knew I had made a mistake there um, was that, that that didn't make any logical sense, okay? All right, the scatter plot shows the number of CDs that were sold from 1999 uh, to 2005. The trend continues how many CDs were sold. Okay, now, this is a line here, okay? All right, this is going to be a line, all right? So we're going to deal with that as a line. That's not an inverse relationship, okay? That's not an inverse relationship. So what I'm going to do is when I go to stat, I'm going to go to menu, I'm going to go to stat, I'm going to have to load these points. So 99, okay, um, now the way I would do this is I would do uh, 1999, 2000, so 1999, 2000, and so on, okay? Just so you don't make a mistake with the years, just 99 and 00. zero. Okay, so in 1999, okay, that's at, uh, let's see, uh, we can estimate about 940 is fine, okay? In 2000, it's about 950, okay? 950, it's pretty close to that line. In 2001, let's say it's 975, okay? I'm sorry, 875, not 975, 875. Um, Let's say in 2002, it's 800. 2002, it's uh, about 800. All right. In uh, 2003, it's about 750. Okay. In 2004, let's say 775. And then the last
last one we get is in 2005, it's at 700. Okay, so what you have to do is that you have to label those X and Y's. Okay, all right, just do your best here. If it's close to the line, it's just an estimate anyway. All right, I can graph it and take a look at it. So this is going to be a line. It's very similar to the points you see. Okay, all right, so I got negative 4.42.67X. Uh, okay, so I'm going to write down the equation for me. I'm going to write down um, uh, Y equals... Uh, negative 42.76x, I'm sorry, 67x, and that other number is uh, 86,269 point uh, 64, okay, so I'm going to go ahead and graph that menu, I'm going to graph, um, let's see, negative 42.76x, not x squared, just x, um, 67, uh, plus 86269.64. That looks right, and I'm going to draw it. I'm going to zoom out, zoom out, zoom out. And hopefully that's, that's enough, okay? Now, it says... How many CDs were sold in 2008? Well, this is the X and this is the Y. So they're giving me X 2008. I gotta find Y. Okay? And if writing that down helps you, go ahead and do that. So I'm gonna find Y. Okay? By putting in 2008. Okay? And it tells me about 588 CDs will be sold. Okay? Alright? Circle the one. Uh, the closest, the X and Y intercept, okay? So this is just very simple. All I'm doing here, okay, is I'm going to menu, I'm going into stat, I'm typing these in, 2, 3, 5, 8, 9, 13, 15, 16, 17, okay, and I'm typing these in, 40, 45, 52, 61, 70, 80, uh, 89, 92, and 100. Okay, all right, it's a line, okay. So it's a slope and winder, so they're basically telling me it's a line. So what I got here, 3.78 for X, so that's gonna be that one, 32.88, so it's gonna be that one, okay. So these will be my answers here, okay? All right, so if they tell you slope and y-intercept, okay, that has to be a line, okay? Has to be, all right? Going on to the next ones. Number six, all right? Now, where you have to be careful of, this is like our x or our y, all right? Now, what they're using, letters, they're using uh, c and h. So don't get confused by that. So instead of y equals it's going to be a C equals, okay? The other variable is going to be H, all right? So I'm going to go put some of these in. Uh, it's one, two, three, four down that side, okay? So let me go back to the, uh, this thing. Let me delete these, okay? All right, one, two, three, four. All right, 50, 65.5. Uh, 85.25 and uh, 98. All right. Okay. Now it's not very good uh, linear relationship here. Uh, that one should probably be. Let me, let me go make sure I type that right. Oh, whoops. That's why that was wrong. 50. All right. Just type that wrong. There we go. There's my line. All right. So calculate x. All right. So what I got here is this would normally be. Y equals 16.375X, okay, plus 33.75. Now, instead of X and Y, we're using C and H, all right? All they're doing is changing those. Now, you got to be careful on your answer. I know it's not these two, okay? So what you have to look at is the H is next to 16.375, and it's positive. So that's why that one's your answer. So be careful on that. This is why they're just using different letters there, okay? 
All right, once again, this is x, this is y. All right, write the equation that best fits this data, okay? All right, so what I got here, once again, all right, so if you're good at using this, but this, this stuff here, this, a lot of this test is going to be pretty easy for you. 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40. Okay? All right. Yeah. 8, 12, 14, 18, 25, 20, 17, 15, 12. Okay? All right, sort of that curve shape like that, so that's going to be x squared. So I got y equals negative 0 0.02, uh, negative 0 0.02 x squared, uh, plus 1.22 x plus 6 point, well, I got 6 point something, 6.95. Okay, there's your equation, very simple. They don't ask you for anything else with that. Using the curve of best fit, write the equation, okay? Once again, this is your x, this is your y, okay? All right, nothing overly complicated here. So back to the menu, back to stat. All right, just delete these. All right, so this is my x, this is my y. Negative 8, 82 is next to it. Then I got negative 7. I got 58. I've got negative 6. 39, I got negative 5, 21, I got 3, and 17, I got 5, 53, I got 7, and 100. Okay, so you see that's a U shape, so I'm going to hit X squared, 1.77. Uh, x squared plus 3.02 x uh, minus 7.59 okay that's my answer on that one okay now here's some of our next problems assume y varies inversely as x okay now since it's inverse okay that means I can do something very simple is just multiply these two values. So I got 20 over x, okay? Now, what I have to do is they gave me y, but I gotta find this one, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into menu, I'm gonna go into graph, delete that. I got 20 divided by x. I'm gonna draw it, I'm gonna zoom out, okay? Now it says find the value of x when y is 28. So I'm going to G solve. I'm going to find x when y is 28, and I get a 0 0.714. 0 0.714. Okay? All right. And I could do that because it was inverse. All right. That's all I had to do. Now it says a beach home is available at a flat rate. The amount of money each person pays is inversely proportional. Now, the amount of money, that's going to be my y. Okay? Uh, to the number of people, which is going to be my x, okay? So what I would do here, let's go ahead and write this down. x and y, okay? People, okay? And that's going to be money, okay? So when I set up my first line, and it says inversely proportional, okay? So I'm going to have um, uh, 5 and 600, okay? Because that's the money. Now, since it's inverse, once again, I can do something very simple. I can do this amount times this amount, okay? And that would end up being about 3,000 all over X, okay? Now it says, how many people are chipping in when the beach pay is 500? Okay, so that's Y. So I have Y, so that means I have to find X, okay? All right, so if I've got Y, boom, I got a number for there, I got to find X. All right, so I'm going to go uh, back into here, 3,000 divided by X. I'm going to draw it, all right? I'm going to zoom out a couple times, zoom uh, out a couple times. Maybe one more time we'll be able to do it. Okay. Now, so what I got to do is I got to find X because I already have Y. So uh, G solve, I got to find X. So I'm X calculating, and I'm putting uh, 500 in there, 
And uh, all right, it's going to tell me that the amount is 6. Okay, that amount is 6. All right, moving on. 11, assume that it varies directly, okay? Directly, all right? So I got x and y directly. y is 20, x is 10. Now, in order to make my equation uh, for direct variation, that always goes through the origin at 0, 0, because it's direct. So I can make that a part of my um, uh, table. Now, with this one, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back and calculate this just like I did the other ones, okay? The line of best fit problems, all right? 10 and 20, okay, 0 and 0, all right? Since it's direct variation, I also know it's going to be a line all the time. Since it's direct, it's going to be a line. So when I graph this, I already know that's going to be a line through there. Calculate x, that's going to be y equals 2x, okay? Now, once again, I'm given y, I got to find that guy. So I got to find x. All right? So, um, all right, so I'm going to draw. Uh, if you want to go back to graph, that's fine. Uh, uh, let me delete this. Okay? Uh, 2x. All right? Draw. I'm going to zoom out maybe a couple times. Oops. I'm going to zoom out. Maybe a couple of these times. Zoom out. All right. So I got to find x when y is 48. Okay. I got to find x. So I'm x calculating when y is 48. And I get 24 is my answer. Okay. A height of the ball varies directly. Okay. That's key. Okay. Now, with our words, whatever is first. All right. So I got x and y. All right. Whatever is first is always going to be our y. So that's going to be the height. Okay. Um, uh, actually, I'm sorry. We're not going to use height. Let's use a different color as well. All right. Okay. So ball bounces. All right. So we've got x and y. So here's the bounces uh, directly from the height at which it's dropped. Okay. Uh, so it's, the, it's from where it's dropped. So a certain ball bounces 40, okay? So that's going to be 40 here. Drop from a height of 50, okay? 50 is going to be here. Since this is direct variation, I know I got 0, 0. I also know it's going to be a line, okay? So I'm going into, uh, back into um, uh, stat, okay? I think I have 50 and 40 there. 50 and uh, 40. Graph, I know that's going to be that. I got y equals 0.8x plus 0. Whoops, that's not my answer. Hold on. All right, I got y equals 0.8x plus 0. How high will the ball drop from a, uh, how high will the ball bounce, okay? So it says uh, from a height of 90. So it got 90s here. I don't know this one. So I got to find y, okay? So I'm going to go into menu. I'm going to go into graph. I got point. 8x, I'm going to draw. Maybe that's good enough there. All right, I got to find y. G solve, I got to find y. And uh, I think we're putting in 90 for that. And uh, I got to probably zoom out if uh, I can't see that. Zoom out, zoom out, zoom out. Okay. So I'm dropping height of 90. Okay. All right, so we already said that's going to be x. We have to find y. All right, 90. Okay, 72 is my answer. Okay? All right, so we've got a few more left. Questions 13 on a test. A grade varies directly. Let's see what time we're at on this video. Okay, sort of a long video. Uh, on the test, the percent grade varies directly. Okay? So uh, the grade, so when we do this, that's going to be, uh, Y is going to be the grade. Uh, this is, X is going to be the answers. Okay, since it's directly, I already know I got 0, 0 involved. Okay, the first one uh, says the grade of 80 and the number of correct answers. Okay, uh, what kind of variation is it? It's a, a, a direct. Okay, 
right? So uh, they want me to come up with equations, so I'm going to go back to menu, stat, all right, uh, 20 and 80. Okay, so that's going to be y equals 4x for the equation. Now it says find that when the grade is 92. Well, what's grade? Grade is y, so that means I got to find x. Okay, so I'm going to go into my uh, calculator. Uh, what was my equation? 4x. I'm drawing. Okay, I'm going to zoom out a bunch. One, two, three. Okay, and I got I got to find x. So g solve x when y is 92. 23. That's my answer. 23 questions. Okay. All right, going down to this one, I got to figure out what kind of variation is it. Okay, so this one I'm going to go into the stat. I need to look at this one. That's going to be two, five, ten. This is going to be five, five point. I'm sorry. That's going to be 14, 5.6, and 2.8. Okay? Now, when I look at this, since it goes like that, that's going to be inverse. So what do I know about inverse? Well, my, uh, that's going to be an inverse variation. Y equals, and what I can do is multiply those two. So that's 28 over X. Find, X when, uh, find Y when X is 14. Okay, so 28 divided by x, okay, uh, draw, all right, I'm going to zoom out a couple times, zoom out, zoom out, okay, so I got to find y, g solve, find y when x is 14, and that's going to be 2, is my answer there, okay, and moving on, the last three questions, okay, all right, uh, I've got this right here, so what I got to do is I got to figure out which Equation. Now, if you're being a good test taker, if this is direct variation, that's okay for a direct variation equation. If this is direct, that's not an that's not a direct. So that's got to cross off. The same thing here. It's inverse. Inverse is this one. All right, this one's not inverse. Okay. So you got to look at the words. That can help you eliminate. So really, you got to pick between A and D. Okay. A and D. Pretty easy. So either it's a direct variation or an inverse variation. Okay. So let's go and figure that out. All right, 4, 8, 10, 20, okay, 600, all right, 300, 240, and uh, 200. All right, so let's take a look at this. Okay, goes like that, means it's got to be inverse. Okay, so we already know, since it goes like this, it's going to be inverse. And also, if you multiply those, that's the number that goes right there, okay? All right, 16. Pressure in a tire varies directly. Okay, so directly, all right? So I got X and Y, all right? Now, they're using different letters. They're using P for pressure, okay? All right, and then they're using t uh, temperature for X, for, so T for temperature, okay? So instead of a Y equals, it's gonna be a P equals, okay? All right, now since it's direct, all right, it says, uh, let's fill in some of these amounts. It says at a temperature of 80, okay, uh, oops, that's the wrong one, okay. Temperature is here, so temperature of 80. The pressure is 60. And since it's direct, I also know it's going to be 0, 0, and a line, okay. Inverse, that's not the case, all right. So I'm going into menu. I'm going into graph. Oh, oops, I'm not going to graph. I'm going to menu. I'm going to stat. I'm going to go 80, I'm going to delete all these, uh, delete all these, alright, I got 80 and 0, I got uh, 60 and 0, alright, alright, I know already know it's going to be, um, so it's y equals 0.75, okay, alright, so instead of the y is going to be p equals 0.75 t. Okay, now the one that's got 0.75 with it is that 3 fourths. Okay, and the last question. All right, once again, you can eliminate stuff here to help you. Okay, if it varies directly, okay, that's a possibility. Varies directly, that is an inverse, so I know that's no good from the start. Okay, inverse, once again, that can't look like that, so that's no good. 
All right, inverse right here. Okay, so here are my two possibilities. All right, so I got to figure out is this direct or is this inverse? Okay, and how I'm going to do that is going to go into stat. Okay, all right, I got 50 and 100. I got 20 and 250. Okay, since it goes like that, it's got to be inverse, which means I multiply those two. Okay. Since it's inverse, it's going to be 50 times 100, which is 5,000, okay? That's another way to write that, all right? So that's why that's got to be my answer, okay? When it's inverse, you can multiply these two, okay? All right, when it's inverse, you multiply this two. Inverse always goes like this, okay? I know that was a long video, a lot of keystrokes there, but if you just practice that stuff, you should do very well.